about search engine optimization. But just firstly, um, a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, you're automatically muted on, on entering with your camera off, but you we would like you to ask questions. You can do it either way. You can put it into the chat at the bottom or the um, Q&A, um, and then Eddie will pick up those questions as he's going through. Today's webinar will be recorded and then it's posted on our Knowledge Hub in a couple of days' time. If you by any chance accidentally leave the webinar or lose connection, you can just rejoin using the same link. So fantastic, enjoy the morning and I'll hand over to Eddie. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, just see people still coming in. Good. So I'm uh, Eddie uh, at the bottom there, Eddie Webb from InSync. Very quickly about uh, me, this is a short session this morning, but we've been going uh, 16 years yesterday. And uh, just so I happened to do it yesterday. And primarily what we do is digital marketing for many, many businesses of all shapes and sizes um, and give a bit of consultancy and we do a lot of training. So hopefully when we, I deliver these sessions, it's based on real world experience and not me uh, just reading textbooks and then regurgitating it to you. So we do this all the time. And this is where you get the, get to get my, hopefully my expertise. Um, what I'm going to cover today basically is an introduction to SEO, how it works, why it's important, and then I'm going to hopefully do a bit of keyword research, well not hopefully, definitely, a bit of keyword research to find out exactly what people are searching for for your businesses, and then look at people's websites and perhaps give some suggestions or examples of how it could be tweaked or improved. So, because um, I can't see your faces, which um, can be difficult sometimes because I can't read whether you're understanding what I'm saying. I really need you, as said, to engage with the chat as much as you can. And to start with, if you could put your web addresses in the chat, if you're brave enough, I won't be rude. Um, just put them in, just so I can pull them up later and have a, and have a look at them. Um, and any questions you get as we go along, put them in the chat. There won't be much time at the end. That's just the way I tend to do things. So if you've got a burning question, ask it when you think about it. If, I, if I'm going to come on to it later, I will do. But for start with, if you just put your web addresses in the chat and don't forget to talk to me. Um, first of all, I'm going to look at the importance of SEO, why it's important. And one of the main reasons why I'm so keen on SEO, search engine optimization, is because in terms of traffic arriving at a website, it's one of the best performing sources of traffic. What I mean by that is, Compared to coming from Google advertising, from Facebook, from Twitter, from um, not necessarily email, search engine traffic is usually much more likely to convert and do what you want them to do. So social media uh, is very unlikely to actually convert them into buying something when they arrive on your website, whereas search engine is much more likely to. And that's because people have intent. They are looking for something. They're trying to find something. So that's where it's really important to focus on it. And if I was to do uh, these courses all the time, very often people um, have not optimized their websites properly and they're missing out on that free traffic. It is the gift that keeps on giving. What I mean by that is that the initial benefit from search engine optimization happens quite early on. So you do your optimization, you find some keywords that you're gonna focus on, you tweak your website, and then you will bring in um, Justine, if you're a little bit late, perhaps you could put your web address in. That's what I'm asking people who are brave just to enter their web address. I've got two so far, two Victor, um, sorry, volunteers who I'm going to look at their websites later. Um, so, but that initial benefit from search engines comes quite early on, but then it keeps on giving. I've done search engine optimization on websites like one year, and then in the next year, you can see the massive improvement of how much business comes that way. Uh, even my staff, when they join and they start learning how to do it, they can't quite believe how simple it is, but then they see increased traffic. Most of your new customers will come from search engines if you're doing it right. <clears throat> Most people don't look beyond page one. I think it's 93% of people don't go beyond page one. So if you're on page three for a phrase, you're not going to get seen very often. Mobile searches. <clears throat> are really prevalent these days, much more, depends on your sector, obviously, but I'd imagine from, uh, from the attendees on here, you're going to be looking at mobile searches more on the web. So you need to make sure your mobile website works effectively, that when people land on it, that it looks good. 
when people are searching on a mobile, they are much more likely to include a location because they're actually looking for something in an area. And that's why your keywords, when you put them on your website, need to include the words you want to be found for. I've got three websites so far. Uh, and I'm going to bring up uh, the ones that I've got now. And I'm going to give constructive criticism on these in a little while, hopefully, unless they're perfect, on how they could be improved. Uh, one more. I'm hoping you can see these websites when they're coming up. And we've got a couple more. Good. Yeah, we can see them, Edward. Good, thank you. It's just once I did it <clears throat> and people can see them. You never know. Okay. <clears throat> My slide just now, the, the simplest tip you can understand about search engine optimization is to write more about what you do. What I mean by that is when you're right, describing your products and your services, don't assume that everyone knows exactly what you do. So, for, and I haven't seen this one before, so if you're looking at this and you're saying, well, it's all about strawberry, that's a big thing is about strawberries, but I'm assuming I'm correct in saying that. Um, and here I've got the word strawberries. And if I scroll down, uh, the only other place visually I can see strawberries is here. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a little check here, go in control F on my keyboard and type in strawberry. I might be totally wrong, obviously. Uh, so anything that's in here, this is the Facebook feed, doesn't count. So I've got strawberry once and strawberries three times. So from a search engine point of view, this website, this page is not much about strawberries. And yet it is about strawberries. I don't know where the third one is. So you would look at that and say, actually, we need to be talking about strawberries a little bit more than we are, probably twice as much as you are at the moment, to the extent where you're thinking, well, actually, it seems a bit wordy. Why are we putting pick your own strawberries and raspberries there? Why are we putting strawberry baskets in there? Um, so when you're reading your text and it feels slightly uncomfortable that you're talking about it a little bit too much, normally that's when it's spot on. And in many businesses, that isn't done. And I just picked that one at random, and I believe that strawberry should be mentioned more often. There are certain places which I will come on to. If you see at the top there of the page, it says home, gower, pick your own. And that is a key place for search engines, which could include the words you want to be found for. So simple tip, if you don't, if you literally everything else I say goes over your head, just write more about what you do and that will improve where you present, where you appear in the search engines. A few stats here, that is a little bit out of date, but trust me, they don't, haven't changed much. <clears throat> in terms of what search engines people use, obviously it's mainly Google. So everything I talk about is going to refer to Google in the main. Don't neglect things like Bing. Bing is used for Siri searches and I think Alexa searches now as well. So any voice searches might be powered by Bing. So it's still where important where, you list, where you're listed on there. Google actually give the results for AOL and for Ask Jeeves as well. So when we talk about optimizing for the search engines, normally I optimize for Google because all the others are trying to follow suit anyway. The thing not to ignore is like Bing Maps. So one of the places you can get found on search engines is in the Google My Business, which is your little business entry on Google. You just type it, if you haven't done that, just go to Google My Business and set your details in there. But there's also Bing Places as well. And very few people remember to put themselves on Bing Places. People who use Bing generally tend to be less technically savvy. Um, I'm not going to be uh, categorize those people, but they get the computer, they click on the internet, and it loads up Microsoft Edge, which has Bing as its default search engine. So if that's your target market, many of your users may be using Bing. Uh, don't forget to interrupt me with um, questions if you've got any, because I will just keep wittering on. Why do we use Google? If you analyze why we all use Google or why so many people use Google, you start to understand <clears throat> uh, the sort of things you should be doing on your website to be favored by Google. Sites that we find on Google are generally fast. In other words, we have a good experience on there. 
we go onto Google, we search for something and we find what we're looking for. We find information on a website that works on our phones or on our computers is quick. So fast sites have an edge. More on that later. Um, lots of information. So many websites these days, and I, I'm just gonna flick through quickly, um, don't have much information. This one's got a fair bit on it. Uh, this one's got a decent amount on it. Uh, this one's got less information on it. So if I was looking at this from a search engine point of view, I would say there's not much text on here. You should be looking at like minimum 500 words per page. Minimum, uh, if more if possible. And some of your pages should be really rich in content. If you're selling online, you need to be describing your products in as much detail as you can. So sites that we find have the information we're looking for. Pictures are important for people, but search engines like text. It should be up to date. If you don't change your website on a regular basis, if it's old, if it's out of date, Google is less likely to risk, uh, list it high up the results. So the, how frequently you change it is really important. It should be easy to use. What I mean by that, if it's easy to use, you'll look at more pages. Google knows how many pages you look at, especially if you use Google Analytics. A big thing that's measured these days is the dwell time. What I mean by that is somebody follows your link in the search engine. So let's say you get found and people spend just a few seconds before they're back on Google looking at the next link. All of that is measured. Um, and, if you're, and if your website is not easy to use, not got useful information, then basically your dwell time will be less. So you'll go drop further down the search engines. The website should be worth spending time on. So it's got useful information. People spend ages on it and they look around and they get things. You should have a good reputation. What I mean by that is you should have a number of links coming into your website. If it's, a, if it's a brand new site or quite a new site with very few links coming in, you will struggle to do well in the search engines. You need to have other people in related industries, whether it's all or related locations, linking into your site. Long standing. So the longer your website has been going, that is a factor as to how well you do in the search engines. What I mean, Justine, by links coming in is that you, let's say, for example, you were supplying your products to a local shop or um, you were on a farmer's market or whatever it was. And then you say to them, if I link to you, will you link to me? Basically, and you have a hyperlink, a web address link on your website, which links to them. And then they also link to you. If, if you anything that um, tourists might want to go to in your area, like pick your own, for example, then you could exchange links with holiday cottages or holiday accommodation in the area, things like that. Now, I'm not going to bore you with any masses of technical data, but um, okay, I'm going to answer that question straight away, Beth. Which is yours? Is yours the? Um, I should know. Let me flip the screen up. I'd like you to type it in again. Just looking at the question. Okay, maybe you haven't put it up yet, yet, I don't know. But your web designer's been very keen, the pages are not too busy. How do we balance that with lots of text for SEO? The basic fundamental thing is that you can have the pictures on the top to navigate, so higher up the page, and then the text lower down. So you don't have to have, I think if I just show you uh, this one, for example, you've got a bit of text here, but then you're straight in navigating straight in navigating and then lower down you've got text which hopefully could be filled with words that are useful for the search engines so the important thing is to have that kind of hero menu where do you want to go click 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 navigation is important having a beautiful looking website is not not important if nobody finds it so it's always a balance hopefully that answers the question so Changes from Google, um, you're welcome, Beth. Um, changes from Google happen all the time. Um, I'm going to show you some of the basic ones. 2011 Panda. This is about poor quality sites, and it's still relevant today. This is websites that have got very little description in them. So if your site, and I'm not saying this is one, but I've got it open. If you go to a product in here, and this affects product websites more than any, any is if you go into a product, and there's very little description, or it's very similar to other pages, 
that will be seen as weak content. So you need to put, and this has got some in there, obviously, it's, it's, there's always more you could do, um, but obviously it takes a lot of time to write it, but you need to have rich content in there. So poor quality sites with very little content or very similar content. Um, dodgy link strategies. Because I said that links are important, one thing that you could do, and some people do, and some web developers do this, they have what we call um, like link rings where everyone links to everyone, uh, which is not a good idea. I know some associations do that. Um, some uh, horticulture associations do that. I don't think it's a good idea. I think you should link organically and naturally with people who are in your sector who relate to you or serve your same customers because it can be seen as trying to game the search engines. Uh, Hummingbird was about understanding the reason for your search. So um, if you're looking for, uh, I don't know, flowers, and you're just searching for flower ideas or something like that, then you may be shown types of flowers because Google understands what you're looking for. It's ra rather than being a literal, what are the words they're searching for? Let's show them that exact words. It could be related suggestions. In April 21st, 2015, Google um, introduced the mobile friendly, uh, what we call the mo mobile again, is what we called it in the, well, that's what we put on our newsletter anyway at the time. Um, basically, if your website was from, um, was visited from a mobile or was not mobile friendly, you would end up lowering the search results. And that is still a factor today. Sometimes people's website speed is slower on a mobile, which is worth you checking. Uh, and as I've said before, how people engage with your website is important what how many pages they look at how long they spend on there um that's what they call rank brain i put it in there but it's there are changes all the time but the fundamentals i'm telling you today are, are long standing and have been there for quite a long time and, and won't i'm unlikely to change three key areas where you would put your um keywords before you go anywhere else is these sections here, your page title, your page description, and you could, if you wanted to, put it in keywords. So I'm just gonna identify these on your pages before we go any further. This is the title tag. Okay, so you can set that uh, within your page, within your web page, and you should be putting your most important words within that title tag. This one here, uh, home weekly seasonal veg box delivered in the veil of Floyd. So that could happen there unless there's something else that could go in there that people are searching for. Uh, that one, I'm going to flick to the home page rather than try and pronounce it. Um, so buy hardy plants online from far beyond nurses, command and shit. So it's got some of the words in there you want to be found for. Uh, uh, I don't know why that opened in a new tag, but it did. Okay, this one here has got home at the beginning, which I see all the time, home and callers. You should have the words you wanna be found for. This one here, home, go pick your own. People put home as the home page because it's a home page, but they should be putting the words they want to be found for. Uh, let me show you description as well. Now the way you can do a description, so the way you can find a description on any, anyone's website is to right click and view the page source. This is in um, Google Chrome. So if I zoom in on here, then you can see here, here is the title. Just gonna close my uh, thing that's pinging away. There's the title and here is the description. The description, the title is 70 characters long. I've got slides with them all this detail in a second. So it's like 70 characters long. The description, is more like 200 characters long and it's an expanded version of your title. So you take the important words you want to be found for and then you sort of fluff them out into a sentence. There are not keywords within here and you don't need to use keywords. They're largely uh, not checked by search engines at all. So those three places are what we call meta tags. The other place in which they will appear, um, if I go back to here, if I go um, pick your own strawberries, then basically this here is also the title tag. And here, and here. So it appears there and it appears at the top of the page. So 
So these are meta tags. Some search engines use them. The most important ones are the title and the description. The title is definitely the most important one. Um, okay, yeah, I've just seen a question from Liz. How find the title information? <clears throat> the easiest way to find the title information on your own website from the without go logging in is to hover over the top of the page. However, to go into like somebody else's or to look at your description without logging in, you go into a page, right click and inspect, uh, sorry, view page source. And then if you want to, you can look for the word description. It should be normally at the top. So I don't think it's on this. I don't think it's on, on this one. If that makes sense. They're meta tags. So the page title is the thing that users see in the search results. Five to eight words. They should be your most important words you want to be found for. 70 characters long. Um, I'll come back to that question in a second. And they also should, they, as well as in, including your important keywords, they should encourage somebody to visit your website as well. So they should be relevant and descriptive. Meta tag, what does it mean? All it is, a tag, to be more specific than that, is something that appears in the back end of your website. It's not normally seen. So it's meta description. Uh, meta, that's the title, it doesn't say meta title. But all of these are what we call tags. They're hidden bits in the background that search engines and other, other places look at to try and determine what the page is about. Uh, and you'll get this slide anyway. But the main two are the method, the title and the description. Description here, you see 225 words, 200 characters. And it may, and I mean may, not always, appear here. Normally with Google, Google likes to pull out text from around the words that somebody's searching for and then put it within that and bring that into the search results. Whereas some search engines will take your description that you've put in that hidden area and put it here. So they're quite important places, uh, things to consider. And that's the demonstration I've just shown you. So before you start, you should be looking at where you appear in the search engines now. But before you do that, you need to know what keywords you're going to be trying to be found for. There's no point you tapping in what you think people are searching for and saying, oh, look, I'm on page two for whatever phrase it is. You need to do that research first, which is what we're going to come on to shortly. That's one thing you do. And then if you want to, you can go through scan on the search engines to see what link you're, what page you're coming up to. But bear in mind, when you search and click on your own business name, you are affecting the search results because Google will show you things that people, um, that you're clicking on. I know some people who are always clicking on their competitors and then get annoyed that the competitors are appearing above them in the search results. And that's because Google thinks we were, they want to see it. So what I tend to do is use another browser that I don't, or that I don't use, like I don't use Edge, and I'll do that to do my searches and I'll never click a link. And then I can have a nice uh, way of seeing where I am. You should look at Google Analytics. So hopefully many of you've got your Google Analytics on your site. If you haven't, um, it's the thing we often cover. And I think just Sarah's just putting in there. Um, we often cover that on one-to-ones on, uh, and you can learn uh, a hell of a lot from looking at your Google Analytics and finding out what people are doing on your site. But one of those little things you can look at is how you're doing the search engines. So I'm just gonna do this on mine. I can't show you a grower on here, because that would be wrong. <clears throat> so on here, the very specific place you would look is Acquisition, all traffic, channels. So when I'm benchmarking, I'm looking at this, I'm seeing organic search, how many people are coming from organic search, which is the natural search on, on Google, the free stuff. And then I could look at it and say, well, how many have come in the last month? Uh, and a lot of them are coming direct, but organic search is quite good, 448. And then I could say, but what about like compared to last month? So you know whether what you've done has made a difference. That's the important thing. 
So organic search is 69% up, but we did have Christmas potentially during that previous period. So it's kind of cheating. So what I can do is check it on the previous year. I'm showing you analytics really quickly because it's not the main focus of this course. Um, we can do it on a one-to-one -one basis or we obviously have done courses on it before, but this will then show me year on year, whether it's gone up or down. So it's 20%, it's 26% up. So there for me, that's a good sign. You also should look at things like Google Trends. Google Trends, really useful um, website. I'm just gonna put it on UK. So you might, for example, think to yourself, when are people, when are people looking for um, bulbs, garden bulbs, for example? And then I'm gonna ignore the last 12 months because they've been quite unusual. I'm gonna go back to 2019. This is a free website, Google Trends. Anyone can go to it. But this shows me then over the year when people are looking for garden bulbs and your web statistics, your search engine traffic will reflect this. So you can see when your peaks are and when your dips are. It's a good way of finding out when you should be doing your marketing campaigns as well. So that's Google Trends, slight, slight aside, but it's a good way of looking at it. You should also be measuring how many inquiries you're getting, how many sales you're getting. That's the ultimate, the key thing. If you want to get inquiries, that's great. If it's sales, that's great. You need to be measuring how it's going. If you're using Google Analytics, you should be able to measure how many sales are coming from search engines. But the point is, know where you are before you start. There's, we use um, webceo.com. You can get a free trial of that, I think. That's the one we use commercially when we do it for businesses because you can, you can do a, it'll give you a ranking report of where you appear in the search engines. You put a load of phrases in and then it will tell you where you appear. And then you can keep doing a scan now and again to measure how you're doing. But you need to know where you are before you start. So the most important thing then is your keyword selection, which most web developers don't look at. And I'd be interested, Beth, to see whether that's been discussed by your web developer at all. Uh, most people just don't look at it at all. Several ones here, moz.com um, and word tracker. I'm not going to show you, well, I'll show you, I'll log into moz.com very quickly, but it is a short course. So moz.com is quite accessible in that it's free. You just sign up for account, you can have 10 searches a month. So I might go um, a vegetable wrong there. It must be early in the morning. Vegetable boxes. Okay, and then I go in and it will give me keyword suggestions. Now, I don't use this one commercially because it's not as accurate as the next one I'm going to show you, but it's nice and easy to get into. Now, I'm not putting the location in there. I'm just going for, in the UK, what would people type in? Because I noticed one of the words on the one I flicked on was, um, was uh, veg boxes, veg box. So I'm quite interested to see whether it's vegetable box or, vegetable, or veg boxes. And so here you've got veg boxes, 628, and vegetable box, 541. So as a strategy, you might think, well, they're both actually quite good. So maybe I might start putting vegetable as well as veg in my key places. So this is Moz. You can download it to a spreadsheet uh, and it's easy to get to. However, the one I'm gonna show you, and this is where I need your input, is Google Keyword Planner. Google Keyword Planner, um, just while I'm just before I rattle on, if you've got like two or three words that or uh, two or three phrases that you want me to check what people search for, can you drop them into the chat? Um, then I can just I can look at it and bring it up on screen rather than me just picking random phrases. So two or three phrases, put them in the chat, and I'll quickly throw them in and see what the <laughs> results are. 
Google Keyword Planner is part of Google Ads, which is a paid uh, advertising platform. So these are where you appear at the top and bottom of Google. And the theory is that if I'm going to do an advert on Google, Google wants to, has to give me estimates on how much I might have to pay, how much I might have to pay per click, how many visits I might get, and therefore how many times people search for different phrases. So what you do is you put in your, um, you put in, you have to go into Google Ads, create an account, put in your credit card details, create a very simple advert with a few lines of text, pick a couple of phrases you want to be found for, and then once you've done that, you'll get access to the Google Keyword Planner. Do your keyword research, which might only take you an hour, and then turn off your ads, and it shouldn't have cost you anything. Um, if someone such as veg box and you have vegetable box written, will it find it as the words are contained in the words you have written? So there's a couple of points there, really. Firstly, Google will recognize that veg is similar to vegetable and it's the same sort of thing that they're looking for. So you'll benefit from that, the logical step that Google understands what they're talking for. However, you, if you put veg box all over your page, then you will rank differently for people who are searching for vegetable box and vice versa. So it's good to work on the one that's the most important. A, a, another good strategy, and I'll come to the other point you've made as well, is that you need to, um, you could decide to create one page which rattles on about, sorry, talks nicely about veg boxes, and another one that talks about vegetable boxes. And that way you create two pages that are very focused on the individual phrases. The other point you're making is that just it, because it's got veg within the word, will that help? And I would say, no, that won't be the case. Um, it does word stemming. So if it's got, you know, with the plural or ing or ed at the end of it or whatever, so the word stemming will work, but in terms of picking out words out of it, it won't work. However, Google will know that it's the same sort of thing. It's like it, sometimes you'll find that people search for the plural of something. Maybe you're, look, you sell, you're looking for, maybe the product you're saying is a bulb, but people are looking for bulbs. And you need to find that out if, it, if Google is listing it differently here, because you will rank differently for the both versions. And very often we sell lots of things, but people are looking for a singular thing. So it's important to, it goes to that level. So let me go from the top of what I've got here. Um, so I'm going to go eco-friendly. I'm going to do that on a second. I don't know, um, Lara, you want to add anything to eco-friendly, another word maybe just to put it in context. And then I'll come back to that one. This is why I got you to um, type them in. So it saves me doing it. So what I'm going to do here is go get results. Um, and here we've got <coughs> willow cuttings, willow baskets, living willow. So you look at those and say, ignore the competition, ignore the top of page bid, it's irrelevant. It's these first two columns that you're looking at. So willow baskets is high, uh, cuttings is the, the worst out of the three. However, then when we go down, we start to get ideas of what people are searching for. So living willow fence. And this is when you start combining words. <clears throat> so you start saying, well, I'm going to have living willow, but I'm also going to put fence at the end of it. And by doing that, you're perfectly optimizing for this and for this, assuming that they're relevant. Willow cuttings for sale. Planting willow cut cuttings. So very often you'll find that people are searching for phrases about how to do certain things related to your business. And that might give you ideas on creating pages which um, answer those questions. So you go through here, there's loads of different stuff you can, you can look at. You can download it as a spreadsheet. This is very often the sort of thing we do on a one-to-one -one, um, and then look at the website and see where to put the phrases. Let me do a couple more. Okay. Um, Laura's gone for it now. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of We Deliver and I'm going to get rid of Online Shop. Uh, but what you might do is like go Herbs 
If they're too generic, just won't do that. Herbs online. Uh, buy. Homegrown. Just put homegrown in there. Let's see what happens. So herbs, vegetable, herbs online. Online is a big phrase that's picked up in the last 12 months. As you can see, this is a bit of a Google trend actually for each individual phrase. And again, putting buy at the beginning of it, a word that you may not have thought of putting, you may not have even thought of putting online in there, but having buy herbs online means you're optimizing for herbs online and buy herbs online as well as herbs. Uh, Eco-friendly plugs, herbs, vegetables uh, isn't searched for, but maybe that's because it joined them together or it's just too long. And then you'll tend to find when it comes to herbs, people, and even vegetables, people are looking for individual plants. They're going in for the specific um, vegetable or herb that they want. And that's when your individual product pages can actually be quite powerful. Have I got any more on there? If no one else has got any phrases, that's fine. Um, unless they're coming in. Oh, here we go. Let's do this one. So CSA, organic vegetables, vegetable box. And let me just put in veg box. Veg box. Description. So CSA, but obviously that's quite generic in a sense. Uh, vegetable box, 2,900, veg box, 9,900. Now you see how those figures are wildly different to what the other one was saying. Uh, this, is, this is the only way you can find out Google figures. Veg box subscription is um, quite low. Veg, look at the difference in this, you see. Veg box subscription, 50. Veg box delivery, 9,900. And I see businesses all the time that might say, no, 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 we're going to do a veg box subscription. That's what we're going to call it. And that's what it is. But, and they don't even look at anything like this. Whereas if you just actually change the wording, you open yourself up to a massive more traffic. Even vegetable box delivery is good. Fruit and veg boxes. Veg delivery. So delivery is an important phrase. You can learn a lot, a lot from that. Now, I'm just going to show you one other thing um, that might, hopefully, won't confuse you totally. What you can do as a next step, if you want to, is to put the quote marks around the phrase. And that will come back and tell you how many other websites have got that exact phrase in it. So here, it's half a million for vegetable box. If I go veg box, there are again half a million, half a million, virtually with a 4,000 out. However, there are four times as many people, what's my page? There are four times as many people almost searching for veg box. So same competing amount of pages, but actually four times as much traffic. And sometimes you might find a phrase like veg box subscription. Let's try this. And the quote marks just only, only brings out those companies you see, those websites, sorry, with the exact phrase. So veg box subscription, although it's only got 50 searches, has only got 5,000 results. So there's not as many competing phrases. And sometimes you'll be going through this and you might find a little phrase that's only got like a, a couple of hundred, but you find that other websites are just not targeting it. And that's the those are the ones that you find it easier to get to the top of the search engines for. So hopefully that is a just showing you the power of um, doing that keyword research first. It is a bit of a barrier to doing it because people say, oh, I don't want to put my credit card details in, it might cost me money. Uh, go in, create the account, it really is worth it. And just then you can just download it as a spreadsheet. Um, and then every time you add new products or new pages, you've got all that research done. This has got 1000 keyword ideas. 
that is a precisely the question, Justine, I'm going to answer now. Where do you put the keywords on the website? So, and this is the process that we, as I said to you, that we literally do this in the real world to try and get websites higher up the search engines. So we would take the phrase, the, the, or the words that you found, and you would combine that into this title tag that's 70 characters long. So you look at all that research, you combine the phrases, and bear in mind that every page has a different way of, a different chance of being found. So for example, on your living Willow page, you may have um, different words on here to a different page. So you get those um, 70 characters, six to eight words from your research, and you put them straight into the title tag. The weeds are the ones that I showed you earlier. So all of these have got some of it in, maybe this one less in there. It's got garden designs on there, obviously. Pick your own is in there, but there could be other words in there. So do your research and put it in there. And then every page you go to, it's not going anywhere for me, that one. Maybe it doesn't. Um, might be a separate issue there, unless it's just being built at the moment, or it's just a bit slow. But these are not taking me anywhere. Um, every single page you look at, like garden makeovers would have a different title tag focused on that particular area. If you've got plants on there, then each individual one already, or bulbs and seeds, that section there could be optimised better to have like bulbs and seeds or bulbs delivered, bulbs direct, or whatever you want to put in there. All that can be optimised. Second place is the, des the description, you may recall, where I said you take your six to eight words and you fluff them out into a sentence. And that goes in the hidden area in the background of your website. So on this one here, I'm sorry, Richard, to be picking on your uh, site. Well, I'm sure you don't mind. Um, so here we've got title. Obviously, we know that can be improved. And I'm suspecting or guessing that there isn't a description. So on that page, there isn't a meta description explaining what the page is. So that's missing an opportunity to be improved. When you've got a big site, it's a never ending process to just keep it optimized. Um, so your description is important. Then what you do is go to your homepage and you, this is what we call heading text. All of this is heading text. This also may be uh, heading text. Let me just check. Uh, that isn't the heading text, but the other stuff is. And you take some of your six to eight words and you put them at the top of the page in that heading text. And it is always, this is when you start, people start to get uh, annoyed with search engine optimization because you don't want to say uh, living plants, willows del delivered direct or whatever. You want to say from field to form because that's your statement, your brand statement. And so it's a compromise between the two. When you're on this one here, this to me hasn't got any heading text unless I'm going here. So there's nothing down there. <clears throat> so I don't, I'm pretty certain this is not heading text. I may be wrong. And so therefore the search engine looking at this would say, well, there's no heading text to understand what the page is about. If we go to our, our, our boxes, this is your heading text on this page. <clears throat> so you need to make sure that's got some of your important words in there. Similarly with this, that is heading text. Uh, or is it, heading? that might be a graphic actually. Not entirely sure. Could be products. That's your heading text. Pretty certain that isn't text. Might be wrong. It is text, but it doesn't look like a heading. So heading text, you know it's heading text because it's bigger and bolder, but sometimes it's within an image. And I'm not, I think this is okay. This is heading text. In the background, it would be called heading one, heading two, like H1, H2. Uh, on this one, this is your heading text. So, and this is very common um, that you'd have people saying, welcome to your uh, Gower Pick Your Own. But you need to have that including some of the words you want to be found for. Then you take your first um, sentence and you get your six to eight words and you put them in and you fluff them out into a sentence. You add words like beautiful, lovely, um, direct or some of the words that didn't make your top eight sort of 70 characters and you put them in there 
And then you talk about it again another five to seven times on the page to the extent where, as I said, you're reading it and it feels slightly uncomfortable. So first sentence, you make sure that's including what you want to be found for. So let me just look for a word veg on here out of interest. So veg, once there, once there. Let's try veg boxes. So veg box only appears twice. Veg boxes, not at all. Veg box delivery, not at all. So <clears throat> and don't be depressed because you don't think your website's optimized. This is why we're doing this course because so many websites are in this situation and you, people don't talk enough about what you do. They think it's obvious. They think everyone knows what they do because it's in there, but you need to find the words and put them in. First sentence again, maybe they might need some category text on this page to actually describe it. But when I go to a product, again, ideally this should be including the words I want to be found for. Like it's got bulb in it, you see? It's got bulb in there once. And I'm assuming this a bulb, the fact that it's a bulb might be one of the things people search for, I don't know. I'm slightly out of my depth. Um, we've got a bulb in there, but maybe the bulb could be talked about just a little bit more. Uh, delivered fresh or whatever, delivered ready to plant or whatever you do, whatever you do with it. And here again, this is the first sentence here. Uh, fluff it out into a sentence and then talk about it, talk about it, talk about it and talk about it more at the top of the page and less at the bottom of the page, which means that it's more prominent for that phrase. Other things you can do, your image, you've got alt, what we call alt text. Uh, I'm not sure, it doesn't work on my browser, but you can have it so that um, when you hover your mouse over it, text will fly out and say uh, what it is. I can't do it on mine. Which is for, um, for disabled, partially sighted people, for example, that so it gets read out to them using the screen reader. But also you can describe what you do. And depending on the website platform you use, you could even uh, rename that image. Let me try this one here. Uh, this is blocking me from doing it, but you can rename the image so that it's called the exact name of what it is. So if I just try this one, I'm gonna open it in a new tab. I've right clicked, open in a new tab. And this is called medium 300 by 225. Whereas it could be called, you guessed it, veg box delivery, medium. And therefore, you're optimizing the image for it as well, which means it's more likely to get found in image searches. So on a simple level, um, I can't see a picture on that one, but let me go to the shop on this one. I'm not sure how this one is built. You should be able to go in and rename some of the pictures. So again, that one, that one is image 018998 scaled. Built badly. Well, the thing is, you built a website. So anyone who builds their own website deserves credit, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I presume, did you build it? I presume you built it yourself, anyway. Um, so achieve, anyone who builds their own website is an achievement. So, so in essence, um, when you um, <coughs> search engine optimization is not that difficult, as long as you do that keyword research and you put it in those key places. Before I move on, this the title, the description, your heading text, and your first sentence, and then talk about it more. Uh, and I'm just going through the things I've already shown you in the presentation now. This is how we do it. Create the title tag first and use that title tag as a basis for the heading text, the opening sentence, the description, and the alt tags. Search engines look for the prominence. So the most important words and phrases need to be at the top of the page, the top of the beginning of the sentence. Repeat it five to seven times on the page. Think about having different pages focusing on different phrases. Heading text, where you link on a page. So if you're linking to something, make sure the words that you link from include those words. Don't just put click here. Put click here to find the bulbs or buy bulbs online and a link. HTTPS, one thing I noticed on yours, <coughs> Justine, was the fact that it's not secure. 
So that's something you need to address. It shouldn't be too difficult to do, uh, but you need to have it so you've got that padlock, uh, like on this one, this one, this one, and this one. That will affect the position in the search engines. Improve your page speed. So you can, you can do checks on your page speed, and I'll do it on one website now. Google page speed. I'm not going to do it on yours, Richard, today, or whoever's watching on Richard's account. Uh, I'm going to do it on this one, just out of interest. And what I'm doing here is using something called Google page speed. The only reason Google makes this is because it wants the website to be a faster place. And if your website is slow, two things will happen. One, you'll rank lower in the search engines. And two, people won't use your website for as long because they'll get frustrated. One second delay means 7% uh, fewer conversions. 46 out of 100 is quite slow. 76 isn't too bad. But what you can do then is scroll down. It will tell you the things that maybe you could do. Reduce initial server response time. Now, I'm suspecting this is built in something like Squarespace or Wix. I may be totally wrong, um, but often there's not a lot you can do about it in that situation. But it will tell you if there's images that are too big that could be resampled or anything like that. So Google page speed is a useful thing to just run your website through. Anything that's red, you probably need to address and try and tweak. So the idea is you send it to your web developer or somebody who knows what they're doing and see if they can improve it. If it's a build your own platform like Wix or Squarespace, sometimes it's slightly harder. Um, and Google is very harsh on mobile. In other words, it's hard to get a good mobile score. And there will be other sites on here that probably score worse than that. <clears throat> Keywords in your domain name, less important these days. The reading ease. This, there are websites where you can put in your web address and it'll scan you and give you your reading ease score. If your website is written in a flowery language than very wordy, search engines won't like it as much. People like bullets and shorter sentences. So that's the sort of thing you can try and write in a different way for the web. People digest information in a different way. Nice, short, chunked information. Uh, what you shouldn't do is Duplicate uh, titles and descriptions. Keep it different on every one. Don't, to, don't go way overboard on the keywords. I've given you a sort of an example. Don't do too much heading text. Make sure every page is fresh, that it's not, you're not just repeating stuff over and over again. Uh, and I'm just going to pick out some of the things I've already shown you here. So I'm just going to pick out a couple of things before I wrap up. This is a checklist. That, these are all the things I've just talked about. One thing you might want to look at is Google um, Search Console. It used to be called Webmaster Tools. If you sign up for that, again, it's free. You have to prove that you own your domain name or that you've got access to it. And then it will show you how you're being found in Google, who's linking to you and all that sort of information. So it's worth doing that. It'll identify any issues. I've talked about link building, so I'm not going to go on about that. But there are websites you'll see in here that when you get this presentation, I need to send it through to you, um, Sarah, or, or whichever Sarah, um, so you can distribute it. But um, you can check using these how many people link to you. Uh, you can also put your competitors' web addresses in to see how many people they've got linking to them to give you ideas on who you could connect with. I've mentioned to you before already about don't neglect Google My Business, Bing Places, and all that sort of stuff, and even Apple Maps get yourself listed. And the simple thing of it is then, choose the right keywords for your website, customize everything, change the links on your page, write more content and find 10 websites that will link to you. And if you do that, um, you will make a difference as to where you appear in the search engines. Now there's one website I'm gonna show you, I need to wrap up in a second, but I'm gonna show you this website and leave it with you. So if you have any burning questions, which you've got one coming in now, when describing features of plants, um, there can be a lot of repetition, height, colour. Is this an issue? Yes, it can be an issue. It's okay to say height, colour and that sort of thing, but you can outweigh those repeated aspects by talking about where those plants could be used or where the, how they could be um, 
in situated what they could be accompanied with or whatever just describe it in a different way they ignore this man it's always irritating so i might part i might put in here um i'm just gonna put willow in um and you can only do two searches a day so i'm only doing one today because i've got another course where i might be using it but you can do this yourself answer the public.com it's in your presentation and i've just put willow in there and these are all the phrases that people are searching for there are uh, 79 i think it's given me 299 results uh, why why will willow filmed which is probably not quite relevant um can they call subsidence can they grow in shade um can i'm using which one is using basket weaving so the idea is that you produce content on your website and blogs and on your social media. And even if it's not a blog, just write pages which answer these questions. I'm not entirely sure when will lockdown end, why that appears under Willow. Oh, it's got the will in there. Uh, but you use this as a research, find what people are searching for, put the content on your website, and it will keep bringing traffic for years. And on that note, I'm going to stop. I'm back to Sarah. Thank you, Eddie. That was excellent. As always, loads to think about, as Liz said. Um, really, really useful. You, I know you've got to shoot off because you've got another webinar at 10. So just a huge thank you, as always. I'll go through and remind everybody that one-to-ones are available with yourself or with members of your team. Um, so please do make the most of that. It won't be funded forever. Um, and it's a fantastic resource and the feedback we're getting from people who've had sessions with Eddie is is superb it's making a real difference you know one one person said four times the amount of sales in last November due to the email marketing session that they did with Eddie so I can't um, I can't encourage you enough to make most of that but thanks again Eddie it's really excellent you're um, welcome we'll see you soon Okay, I'll disappear because I've got to be on the next one in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Nice you. Thanks for engaging. Okay, superb. And thank you all for attending as well. Um, there's some really good questions and that helpful keeps the session, keeps the session lively. Um, when you leave today's webinar, there'll be a short evaluation form to, for you to complete. If you can spend a couple of minutes doing that, it's really useful for us. It helps with our future delivery. And if there's anything else that Sarah or myself can help you with, please do get in touch. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.